All right. Well, good morning and welcome to Marty First Baptist. We're so glad to have you joining us this morning. Whether it be physically or virtually, we're excited that you're here this morning. If you're here physically, would you stand as we begin worship this morning? Oh, let's worship together. He's coming on the clouds. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion. The Lion of Judah, he's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Open up the gates this morning. Open up the gates. Make way before the king of kings. The God has come to save. He's here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sin of the world, his blood breaks chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Who can stop the Lord Almighty this morning? Let's worship. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Yeah. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's pouring with power and fighting our battle. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, 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 oh. Every knee will bow before the lamb. Daniel Hensley, would you open us up in prayer this morning, please? Amen. You may be seated this morning. Sing worthy is this morning. Worthy is the 
Lamb who was slain, holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Sing that again. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. And holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Golden rainbows of living color, flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Blessing and honor, strength and glory empower me to you, the only wise. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing, praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. We adore you, oh Jesus, yeah. filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water. Such a marvelous mystery, yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything. You. And holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. If you will just bow your heads where you're at this morning. We'll take a time and just pray for our church, pray for our community, pray for our country. If you have a need this morning, would you just slip your hand up in the air? Nobody looking around. We're just going to take a moment and just pray for those. Pray for one another.
my God, we love you this morning. God, and full of a world of uncertainty. God, we stand with you this morning. God, in a time where we don't know who the next president's going to be, God, we know who the king will be. In this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there is only we believe we believe in this broken generation when all is dark you help us see there is only one we believe we believe we believe in God the Father we believe in Jesus Christ we believe in the Holy Spirit that he's given us new life we believe in the crucifixion we believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe. So let our faith be more than half done. Greater than the songs. We believe We believe We believe in God the Father We believe in Jesus Christ We believe in the Holy Spirit That is given us new life We believe in the crucifixion We believe that He conquered death God will say we believe, we believe, and the gates of hell will not prevail, for the power of God has torn the veil. Now we know your love will never fail. We believe, our singing church, we believe in God the Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit. He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that it conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And He's coming. Oh, we believe, church. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. That He's given us new life. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And He's coming back again. We believe. We believe. Oh, we believe. that chorus some more time we believe in God the Father 
We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit that is given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe. I've been held by the Savior. I fell far from above. I've been down to the river. I hate to sing, gotta go. Church, would you stand as we sing this morning? Oh. God, that you would use him in a mighty way as your messenger. God, I'll be with us this morning um, in our Sunday school hour, in our time of worship, in our time of study. God, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Be seated. Welcome, everyone. So glad to have you here in the house of God this morning. Take your Bibles and turn to the book of Hebrews this morning. We're going to get right to it, to the book of Hebrews this morning, uh, chapter number four. Hebrews chapter number four. We've been uh, uh, preaching through the book of Hebrews, and this morning we're going to continue that. Last week we finished off where we spoke about the Word of God. Folks, I'm so glad that we have the Word of God. Don't you? Amen. I'm so thankful for it. This morning we're going to talk about our great high priest. Our great high priest. He's the Lord and Savior. Now, now when we went to uh, begin this book, uh, there's a lot of things. There's some warnings. I've done given you two warnings that we find out that the Scripture says about it. And chapter 3, verse 1, kind of look right there. Hold your finger. Just back up just a tad. I'm going to read that first because this is kind of where uh, the writer here introduces us, if you will, uh, to uh, the Lord and Savior, our great high priest. He said, chapter 3, verse 1, he said, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. He wanted us to note that there is someone that has the office of the high priest. Now, when Jesus lived here, when he was a part of this life, before mentioning, if you will, the priesthood of Christ, although he never acted as a priest while he was here on earth, during Jesus' earthly ministry, he never was a high priest. That was something that came later after he lived his life, lived a perfect sinless life, he became a our great high priest. He is that. He holds, he holds the office of prophet, 
priest and king. And I'll share that with you a little bit more here in just a moment. But we find that as he, he was in this world, he never did act on being a high priest. Now, many called him rabbi, many called him teacher, and he was that, and he did those things. But he came, remember what the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 29, 29 John the Baptist looked at Jesus and he said, Behold, what? The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Jesus was the Lamb. He became our perfect sacrifice. Folks, all of us in this room have failed and we failed miserably. We needed someone who was tempted and tested just like we are, that knows everything about us, that made us, formed us, and fashioned us. Uh, can I ask again, how many of y'all failed this week? Raise your hand. Yeah. I look around the room and guess what? That's all of us. That's all of us. We've all failed. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. That's why the Bible tells us time and time again, there is none righteous, no, not one. Now, if you will, in chapter 4, verse 14, if you got it, say, I got it. The Bible says these words, seeing then that we have a great high priest. Underline that in your Bible. A great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Let's keep reading in chapter 5, verse 1. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for our sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of his way for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity? And by reason hereof, he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. Now, this is a high priest that was brought out of the tribe of Levi, from the uh, Aaronic, uh, if you will, lineage, from the Levi tribe, the priestly tribe. And they had to go in every year and make a sacrifice, first of all, for themselves. And they went into the Holy of Holies and made it. Now, Keith Ritchie does a tremendous job of this when he taught us about the tabernacle. Did a great job in teaching us about these things. And the high priest would go in one time a year on Yom Kippur. Now, the Jews still celebrate Yom Kippur, which is called the Day of Atonement. And we find that Day of Atonement is when he went in, made a sacrifice for the sins of himself, and then he made a sacrifice for the sins of all the people of God. And so we find today... We still need somebody to do that. And I'm thankful we got a great high priest whose name is Jesus. Amen. He took care of that for us once and for all. Once and for all. Now, keep reading with me. Verse 5. So also, he says, Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he said to them, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. God the Father said that. And he saith also to another place, Thou art priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, interesting dude right there. We need to circle that one. We'll come back to that a little later time. He said, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, with strong crying and tears to him, he that is able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared though he were a son yet learned he obedience by the things which he affirmed and being made perfect he became author look at that of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him called of God as a high priest after the order of Melchizedek now we find that the writer here this is a whole whole section giving us all and teaching us about our great high priest. We find the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the Lamb of God. You see, he occupied that threefold office. As I said earlier, he was prophet, where he came, if you will, uh, as the Lamb of God. And, and, and 21 centuries ago, that's in the past, Jesus came and he became our prophet. He was our prophet. And today, present, he is our priest. And right now, in the here and now, he intercedes right now on your behalf, on my behalf, on behalf of the people of God. And then thirdly, he is the king for the future when he comes again. Folks, one of these days, the king of kings is coming out of the eastern sky. Amen. 
He's coming. He's coming back for us. And I, I'm excited about that. But we find that Jesus offers to us these things. And we find that Christ, as a priest, he came to act on behalf of men in rebellion to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for our sin. We read that in chapter 5 about how that the high priest would do that. That's why what the high priest did on those days, we have a sin problem. And God came to give us his son Jesus to take care and alleviate our sin problem. Say amen. That's what Christ did. So now, if you will, let's, let's, if we look at God's word, let's keep in mind that Christ performs the office of the high priest. Okay, By once offering himself as a sacrifice to satisfy the divine justice and to reconcile us to God. Now, he now makes continual intercession. Now, this is what Jesus does today. He continually goes before the Father and makes that intercession. How can he do that? Because as the God-man, we find Jesus went to the cross, died on the cross, gave his life, and when he cried, it is finished, he did everything the Father said he needed to do to atone for all of our sin. Now think, Jesus died for every man's sin, past, present, and even in our future. He died for all of those things. He is now at the right hand of God. And folks, what happened was, once and for all, he gave, he made a sacrifice, and his blood gave us, his blood cleanses us, his blood cleanses us, the Bible says, from all unrighteousness. So if you will, he was made, if you will, the purification for sins. He had gave up, if you will, on the mount of God. Not until the Son of God had completed the work of redemption and ascended to the right hand of the majesty. Then he was the priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now you go back, Melchizedek, woe back in the Old Testament when Abraham was to give a tenth of his money or of his riches uh, to a man named Melchizedek. He has no earthly father and mother. We don't know much about him. It's a, it's a true mystery about Melchizedek. It's a pretty interesting thought. And we find that Jesus came. He is, you will, he is now functioning today as your, if you're a child of God, as my, as a child of God, great high priest. Somebody say amen. Now let's go back and look at verse 14 and let's pull this thing apart and let's see what God has to say. Now the Bible says these words in verse 14, seeing then that we have, that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Now we find, if you will, the heavens, that's, that's plural. There's three heavens. We find there's heaven that we have here that's in our atmosphere. There is outer space where, where the moon is, where the sun is, where the planets are. And then there's God's heaven. So he went, to, went through three heavens. The Bible says that Jesus passed through the heavens. Are you with me? Say amen. He passed through the heavens, the Bible says. He said, Jesus, the Son of God. Now, he tells us exactly who did that. It wasn't Buddha. It wasn't Muhammad. It wasn't some far of kind of a guy. His name was Jesus, and he did that because he atoned for the sacrifice and became the sacrifice for the sin of every man, woman, boy, and girl. He did that because he loves you. That's why he did that. You see, the scripture here gives us word, and we find the Son of God. He said, the Bible says there, he says, let us, if you will, let us hold fast. Now, the hold fast, this is the third time that the scripture in the book of Hebrews gives us hold fast. It's found in chapter 3, verse 6, and chapter 3, verse 14. We won't have time to run to that, but you look at that later. But it's the third time he says hold fast to our profession. You see, if you will, that means to cling as it might require some determination on our part. Chapter 10, verse 23, you can go there and look at that. Our Christian profession, if you will, of of confession which is involved in our commitment to Christ, not just our tongue, but our life. You see, our walk and talk should match up. If I preach it, I ought to talk it, I ought to walk it, I ought to live it. Say amen. That's how we ought to live. We ought to live our life just like we preach about it, we talk about it, we tell everybody we're believers, we're a child of God, we're Christians, we're saved, we're born again, we're going to heaven. Well, let your walk match your talk. Come on, say amen. I think that's most important. And so he tells us, let us hold fast to our profession. And I like that word profession. Dr. McGee says it's confession. It ought to be the way we confess 
our daily life before God. How do you live your life? How do you share your life? What do you do with your life? He's speaking about our testimony. Everybody's got a testimony. Everybody's got a word to share. Everybody has something to say. He's telling us about our witness down here on earth. You see, Christ died down here to save us. He lives up there to keep us saved and enable us to be a good witness, to be his hands and his feet. Now, this week, this past week, I went to Little Rock. I had a meeting. I'm a, I serve on the executive board of the Arkansas Baptist State Convention. And Dr. Tucker spoke. We did not have the state convention this year uh, because of the COVID virus. And so we had an executive board meeting. And we met, just executive board meeting, did all the things that was necessary. Well, Dr. Tucker preached his message. And so he, I told Cole about it. I said, I'm going to use this illustration Sunday morning. But... Uh, Dr. Tucker said that him and his wife uh, uh, in their home, he said she came to him and she said, Sonny, she said, I want to uh, 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 renovate the kitchen. No, oh, we don't want to do that. Yeah, well, I don't want to do that. Yeah, we want to renovate the kitchen. Well, guess what? They renovated the kitchen. Can I have an amen? Y'all know what I'm talking about. So they renovated the kitchen. And he said, he said, I told her, said, hon, I'm going to tell you what. And, and they got in there and they moved all, everything out of the kitchen. I mean, it was just naked. It was bare. They tore everything up in there. Sawdust everywhere in my house. It was an inch thick. He said, I had sawdust in my breakfast cereal, all right? I hated sawdust everywhere. He said, it was awful. It was terrible. He said, they worked and worked. He said, it cost me more than I wanted to pay. It took them longer than I wanted to be there. He said, I did all these different things. He said, but you know what? When they got it all put it back they all cleaned it up and by the way he said they let my cat in and out the house and you know what cats do when they get in the house somewhere in a corner can I have an amen <laughs> all right <laughs> but you know he, he said you know what Kim or everybody that was there he said when they got done with it you know my old house looked pretty good I kind of like my kitchen again Kind of like going in there and fixing me a sandwich when I wanted to. I like going to the new refrigerator and the new stove and all the new microwave that we put in there. Had it, it would look really good. And said, we have a new bar there. And it said, it's a great place to sit down and just do some study and kind of get yourself together. And it's in my favorite house, uh, place in the house, the kitchen. Amen. Well, you know what, guys? Here's what's happening right now. We're in a major renovation in the church. We're in a major renovation. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like it. I don't care for it. I actually hate it. If, I, if, you, if, you could, if I could just be honest with you. I don't like what we're doing. I don't like what we're having to do. I don't like how we're having to do it. I'd rather be in there worshiping. I'd rather be in there singing. I, I mean, it just sounds better in there, y'all. I mean, we sounded good this morning. I think y'all really sung this morning. If I don't light your fire, your wood's wet, all right? It was good. I, man, I was good. I was getting into it. It was good stuff. But you know what? I'd rather be in the auditorium, enjoying the auditorium. I'd rather be there. How about y'all? Would y'all like to do that? Me too. But you know what? God's trying to teach us a little bit of something. I, I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm still trying to figure that out. You know what? This is what's happening to the Jews. They got a major renovation because forever they had a high priest. And one time a year on Yom Kippur, he would come and make a sacrifice on their behalf. In A.D. 70, they were destroyed. The temple was destroyed. The Jews have not had a sacrifice since A.D. 70. That's a long time ago. The Jews are going through a major renovation. The church is going through a major renovation. We're going through things. It's costing us more. I, I, they keep telling us all the statistics. When we read the statistics, it's heartbreaking when we get all those things. But it's a major. But folks, when we all get said and done, I bet God's going to have it like God wants it. How about that? Amen? I believe he will. I, I, I'm, going to, I'm praying that he does. We're praying for wisdom and guidance that God would lead us through this renovation time. That's what happened to the Jews. The Hebrews were going through it. This book was written to Hebrew Jews and God's training and teaching through a renovation process. Now, now if you will, uh, again, it's the time. It's the life. We find God calls us to live by his word. I told you last week how important the word of God was. 
And we find verse 14, let's read it all together again. He says, seeing then that we have a great high priest, his name is Jesus, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. He, he identifies us, let us hold fast, let us hold on, let's make sure that our confession, that our profession is right. Verse 15, he tells us in verse number 15, for we, believers in Christ, children of God, if you're a child of God, say amen. Amen. Come on. I'm telling you, we ought to be out shouting the glory. It ought to be our confession that Jesus is the Christ and we love him and we care for him and he cares for us. He, we believe, we find we have not a high priest. Look what he says. He says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. You know what that means? The God-man, Jesus, who came as a prophet who lived and did everything that God asked him to do, died, was buried, and on the third day, praise God, he rose again. He's alive forevermore. Amen? Now he sits at the right hand of majesty, at the right hand of the throne of God, as our great high priest. He there to live to ever make intercession. How many of you have went time and time back to God again for the same thing over and over? Huh? Same bunch of folks that failed a while ago, are we? Uh, yeah. I mean, just honestly, that's the way it is. Just think about that. How many times we, we mess up and God the Father goes back. He listens. His son sits there and says, he said he was sorry. He said they won't do that again. And I can just see the Father looking at him and say, you really think that? Do you really believe that? Kind of how I feel sometimes, kind of, kind of cowing down with my head down and, and, and just saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I messed up again. I, I'm sorry. I've done it again. You see, folks, we have a great high priest that, 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 that knows how we feel. How do I know that, Brother Kim? Because Jesus, we talked about this in our, in our discipleship group a couple weeks ago, that in all points Jesus was tempted, he was tested just like me and just like you, for whether it was power, whether it was prestige, whether it was a, to the flesh, how that in, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 11 speaks about those things. And so we find that we have a high priest. He's able to sympathize. You know what that means? To sympathize with us. If you're here today and you've had a spouse and you've lost a spouse, there are other people in this room that can sympathize with you because they know you and your hurts because they feel the same way. If you're here this morning and you've lost a child, there are other people in this room that can sympathize with you because they have lost a child. They can sympathize with you. If you're here this morning and you've had a broken heart, you've had a discouragement, you've had trials, you've had heartaches, you've had hurt, all of us in this room can sympathize with you because we know how you feel. That's our great high priest. He knows how you feel because he went through it. He was tested in all points, the Bible says, yet he was without sin. Look what the Bible says, verse 15 again. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, or that word tested could be put right there, like we are, yet he was without what? Sin. He never sinned. He overcame where we failed. He, 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 he won that battle. He won that victory. He was tested. He knows what it feels like to be hungry. Jesus knew that feeling. Y'all have been hungry. We can understand that. Jesus knew that. Jesus knows what it means to go through grief because the Bible says Jesus wept in all points. So let me tell you something this morning. We don't have a God that sits in heaven and looks down on us and frowns every time we make a mistake. Every time we do something stupid and wrong and goofy. Every time we do something that we shouldn't do. Our great high priest makes intercession on our behalf when we go to him and confess that to him. Now the word confession, it doesn't mean that you've told it. It means you agree with God, I've done something wrong. That's what it means to confess. 
So once again, I share with you, there is none righteous. No, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody. That great high priest, when he served here in the office, he had a, a, a special garb. If you look back in the book of Leviticus, you can read about his special clothes that he had. And on that one day a year, Yom Kippur, which the Jews still celebrate, the Day of Atonement, when he would go in and he would take that, he went to the Holy of Holies. And on the mercy seat, he would sprinkle the blood of the sacrifice. Jesus himself went into the very throne room with God. He passed through the heavens, through our atmosphere, through space, past the sun and the moon, the stars and Jupiter, and he went all the way to the throne room of God. And there he was. He made intercession for you. That's how much he loves you. Because the next verse, verse 16 says, here's what we can do. Let us therefore, let us, we believers in Christ. Folks, remember, this is not written to a lost man. This is written to those that are saved. If you're lost here today, I want to share with you that you can be saved because of the great high priest. Say amen. But he says here, let us, he said, let us, we come boldly, we do not need to fear. We do not need to be worried about being turned away. We do not need to feel guilty. We do not. Defeat. That's all things that come from Satan. He said, let us therefore come boldly. Come, if you will, circle that word boldly. The word boldly. He wants us, we do not need to fear. He knows us. He, we can come to him with all the freedom, if you will. You are loved. You're beloved. You're encouraged to come to him with all the things that you're bogging you down. Folks, and I know during these difficult days, it's only gotten worse. It's only gotten worse. Your job, your finances, how am I going to feed my kids? How am I going to pay my house payment? How am I going to pay for my car? What are we going to do at school? What's the kids going to do if they get sick? What if we got a quarantine for 14 days? Difficult times. I preached on that Thursday night at Cowboy Church. Difficult days. Perilous times. But here's, I want you to know, this is good news. Because the Bible here says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Jesus passed through the heavenlies, went to the throne, and there the Father was. And he made atonement for our sins, for the sins of the world, for every man, woman, boy, and girl, so you might go to heaven and be with him. What a joy it is. The throne of grace. His throne is a throne of grace. It is now a mercy seat, a throne that we find is so amazing that we may, in those times of need, may obtain that mercy. We need a lot of mercy. It goes up, uh, to our, back to our past. It saw our needs. It met those needs. It helps us to find grace. You see, help, the word help, our great high priest assists and sustains us in our weaknesses. I'll get a phone call. Brother Kim, this is so-and-so. I need some help. Okay, what do you need? And we begin to talk. Whether that's a burnout that we got Friday that Miss Lori called me about, or a fellow that needs some extra money, or a family that needs some food. They come and they, no, no holes barred. I don't sit there and say, well, why ain't you got some money? You know, if I said that, I wouldn't be here. If I said, well, why ain't you got money? What are you doing with all your money? Well, hey, they don't have money. They don't have that help. They come to us for help. We're his hands. We're his feet. We're his arms. We're his eyes. We're his ears. We are part of him. We're an extension of him. Let us therefore come boldly. Don't be afraid. To get on your face before God and say, Father, I've sinned. I've messed up. I've done wrong. And you know what? There ain't nothing you've ever done that he won't forgive. Do you hear that? There's nothing you've ever done he won't forgive this morning. If you will, we need to come. It's, grace is freely given. Mercy is freely given. Have you been to the great high priest today.
Have you been there? Have you been to him and fell down on your face and said, Father, I'm sorry I've sinned, I've messed up. Father, I need you. That last song we sang, my only hope. Folks, I'm telling you, if I don't have anything else in this old world, Kim Bridges has hope in Jesus Christ. Kim Bridges has the hope that Jesus Christ will take me and love me and forgive me and do for me what I can't do for myself. All my hope is in Jesus. You see, God gives mercy for all of our past deeds. We don't even want to bring that past up. Can I have an amen? And God gives grace for our present needs. Today, every one of you here, come to the great high priest. Everyone here, everybody here, come to the great high priest. Because he has a lot of forgiveness. He has a lot of grace. He has a lot of mercy. He has a lot of love. And he wants you. He wants you. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Father, today, thank you for the word of God. Lord, I'm so thankful for the great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, who passed through the heavenlies, who went directly to the throne room of God, who sits at the right hand of mercy and majesty and power and grace, who does for us what no man can do. Father, I'm glad that I can come to him because he knows how I feel. He was tested just like I have. Where I failed, he, he overcame. And God used, allowed Jesus to be the propitiation, the payment, the appeasement, if you will, for all the sins of the world once and for all. Lord Jesus, I love you. If there's someone here today, Lord, that doesn't know you, I pray for them. I pray, Father, that your mercy and your grace, if they would confess their sins. If a Christian here this morning would do the same and confess their sins and, 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 and that because you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins. If we, we feel like that we're away from you in our relationship, God, may we come. May the prodigals come home this morning. Because our only hope, our only help is found in Jesus. Father, I pray this morning for this nation. I love America. I pray for her. God, I pray for the turmoil that we're facing day after day after day. I pray for this relationship. I pray, God, that what we're going through now as a nation and in a world in this pandemic, God, that you would help us to rent, be renovated and understand we don't like what we're going through right now, but God, we know that you can help us through it because I know you've got a better plan. You've given us another opportunity to reach more people with the gospel to tell more people about Jesus so that one more can go to heaven and one less will be in hell sir if you need Jesus today I beg you to come to me I'd love to share you and introduce you to Jesus just say Lord Jesus forgive me of my sins I'm a sinner and I need a savior come into my life and forgive me he'll do it you can come boldly to him today one time and then after that you're one of his kids come all the time, every day, several times a day, because he loves you. Father, today, thank you for the great high priest. Thank you for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I encourage you folks to pray for our nation. Make, a, make an altar right where you sit. There's an altar open over here on my left and on my right. If you need to come and bow and kneel over here right before me today, I just pray that whatever you need, if I need to share with you about Jesus, come on, let me introduce you to Jesus. Don't leave here without Jesus today. Are you ready? Let's do what needs to be done. You pray, church. It's Cole and him sing this morning. You pray right now. Do what God says to do. Lord, I come. I confess Bowing here I find my rest Without you I fall apart You're the one That guides my heart Lord, I 
about you, ma'am. Defense my righteousness, oh God, how I need. Sing with me, all right? Sing with us this morning. Sing with Cole. Let's ask God what we need. We need Him. Let's allow Him to do what needs to be done. Come sin to the great high priest. But sin runs deep. Your grace His grace is more. Grace is you can find Him there at the throne of grace. Come on. You can come boldly to Him this morning. Whatever your need is, whatever you need from us today, allow Jesus first place. Lord, I am free. Holiness. Christ in me. is Christ. Church. Where you are this morning. Where Would you, you stand are? as we sing? Where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Sing it, church. Lord, I So teach my song to rise to you. When temptation, when temptation, when temptation comes, and it will way, every day. When I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, sing it. Jesus, for my hope and stay. That's it, everybody. Good. When, I stand, when I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. You're my hope and stay. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour. Every hour I need you. You're my one defense. My righteousness. Oh, God. Tell somebody you're glad to hear this morning, all right? God bless you. Thanks for coming. Good to have you today. God bless y'all. Cole, what's going on, bud? Uh, hey, a few quick announcements this week. Tonight will be our discipleship groups. They'll be meeting um, at various times. Um, so you can watch the screen behind us as they roll through about what classes are going to meet during when. Um, but we have uh, discipleship groups all afternoon. Uh, Tuesday will be our TNT, our Tuesday nights together. Our youth, uh, youth Bible study will meet at 6.30 on Tuesday nights. Wednesday will be midweek morning manna um, at 11 o'clock. Come be a part of that if you're a senior adult. We have a really good time in fellowship. Just enjoy that time together. I look forward to it every week. And then that will air at 6.30 on Wednesday night. And then uh, our drive through food ministry will be from 5.30 to 7 this Wednesday night. And we're having chili, crackers, cheese, and cinnamon rolls. So lots of good stuff going on. We're excited, looking forward to that. Um, don't forget, even though next Saturday is Halloween, move your clocks back. Because um, I will not be here at 8 o'clock in the morning to let you in for the 9 o'clock service. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Luke, that's your job. you got to be here at 8 to unlock the front door next week. How do you tell Jerry Don that? Don't forget, okay? All right. But, hey, lots of good stuff. And then next Monday, so we could go a week from Monday, November 2nd, um, we're going to have kind of a special cowboy church. We're going to move that to that Monday. And we're going to kind of have a pre-election cowboy church night. So before the election on Tuesday, we're going to come together in here at 615 on, on Monday night. Um, just have a time of worship for, and for our Lord and then a time of prayer for our country and just open up God's word. So good stuff happening. Um, be sure you're a part of it. All right. 
Hey, guys, thank you so much for your support, your love, everything you've done over these last months. I can't thank you enough. Uh, continue uh, to give back in the plates on the sides, uh, back in the little box, brown box. In the plate, we're taking up for our child Operation Christmas Child. Yes, Is that right? Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. We, uh, we, if you click the link, it's going to show that we still only have about seven or eight boxes filled. Um, however, we've taken count of the money that we have received from you, and we have enough money to build about another 25 shoe boxes. So with that being said, we're still about 15 short, um, so we need about 300, 400 more dollars to complete our order for, uh, for 50 shoe boxes. And so if you'd like to give to that this morning, just put it in the, uh, in the offering plate on the back table. Yep. We appreciate all you've done. I love you guys. Um, but Keith's going to have Sunday school here in just a few minutes. Uh, and actually, I didn't think I'd get through this quick, brother. I really didn't. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you today for Jesus. And Lord, I'm praying for that one person that might be here in this room or that one person in the sound of my voice through our social media today that's heard the good news, that's heard about our great high priest and needs Jesus. And I pray for them today, Lord, because you're our only hope. Lord, there's only one way to get to heaven. Lord, there's not 10, there's not 20, there's only one. And I pray today that they would trust you. Thank you so much for these wonderful people that I serve with. I'm so honored to be a part of their life. Thank you for Cole and the group, the band today that did such a marvelous job of leading us to worship. Thank you for your people. I love these folks. Would you bless them today? Thank you for our guests today. Would you bless them in a really special way? Bless our Sunday school hour and our second service today. We love and thank you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said... Amen. Thanks, guys. You're dismissed. Appreciate you very much.